Hi, Alan Schimmel, DevOps.com here at DevOps Enterprise Summit 2015. I'm joined by Kaimar Kuru of Axelos. Hello. Kaimar, thank you for uh, joining us. Kaimar, you spoke here today, or you're speaking. I just spoke, yeah. Just spoke, just off the floor. And of course, you're, you're a little different than some of the <laughs> other speakers. You're not a DevOps dude, per se. Well, kind of, I kind of am and kind of am not. Um, so my background is actually in traditional IT and the DevOps world as well. So before joining Axelos, I was uh, with Skype for a few years, uh -huh. so kind of learning about how the, the DevOps world, Agile world, actually works. Um, but yes, so IT is very often not really linked that um, easily with DevOps. And some people are saying that, well, when you do DevOps, you can't do IT anymore. There's a huge conflict with, between these two, and you need to throw one out or the other one out, which I don't think is true. Um, so we see a very good alignment uh, between um, IT and DevOps. We see DevOps as the answer to the, why, uh, the, the how question of many aspects in IT service management. So for us, it's really, really good to have this movement and philosophy out there now to help organizations kind of get from where they are now to where they want to be. It's like the yeah. way to get there. So, I, you know, we, I, I've also seen the, the, the naysayers who say idle DevOps, you know. But that goes so against the DevOps philosophy of being inclusive. And, and I wonder sometimes where does it come from? Is it, is it that people don't want it to work? Or is it a, a turf protection type of thing? I, I think there's truth to both. So there is certainly some turf protection going on as well, especially around something which is kind of just converging, but it's not, it's not there yet. So DevOps is, we still don't know exactly what it is. It, it is a philosophy, it is a movement. How much does, do tools have to do with this and all the other aspects? We're still trying to figure it out. So people who have found their kind of handle to DevOps, so they think they understand now what DevOps is, they're trying to hold on to that. And anything that conflicts with their view of what DevOps is, is almost necessarily a, a pain or, or a threat. They're trying to hold on to their reality. Yeah. But, and, and that is sort of typical of when you look at you know, the crossing the chasm, the adoption, technology adoption cycle, the, the early adopters always want to keep it special, right? And it's theirs. Yeah. And what about an idol though? Has the idol world sort of been through that? Have they been through their growth phase in that regard where they're trying to get territorial? So ITIL as such as a framework, it has changed a lot over time as well. So I think it's you know, 26 years uh, since the first version ever came out. And we have changed it over time. So it, it was just maybe 15 years ago, it was mainly about the IT operations management. And then starting in 2007, it was more about service management and actually delivering value to your customer rather than just managing the IT operations. And many organizations who have found ITIL in the past, perhaps, they haven't really found the, the latest edition yet, or they haven't transfer, transformed from IT operations to service management. So this is why some of them might have a view that, okay, so we did all these things, which we called ITIL, and now we, are, we heard about this DevOps stuff, and they don't seem to play that well. So what, what's the problem? Well, if you did those things, you did them for a reason, granted, but should you be doing them today? It's like nothing in ITIL that says that you need to have a cap that reviews every, every change um, or you, that you, you can't have automated uh, deployments or these things. Like you can do all those things. You weren't able to do before, now you are. So do them. But look at this as, as a, like a larger picture. It's not just about deploying more or, or changing more. It's about delivering value to your customer. Right. And this is where DevOps helps to make that happen and ITIL and ITIL management give you the, the framework of how it all fits together. Excellent, excellent. Um, besides your own session, what are there any other sessions here over the next couple of days that you're looking forward to? Actually, it's very difficult. It's, it's extremely difficult to choose. Um, with this parallel session, it's like I want to be there, there, and there, and there. So what I'm trying to get most out of this, or actually most conferences, is the user stories or the customer yes. stories of success or failure, but what they have done. What makes this conference so special is most of the sessions are about that anyway. So it's not that easy. To, it's that much easier to choose because they're all just like about the, the experience. Yeah, and there's plenty. Of, there's plenty of user stories here as well. Lots. Yes. Absolutely. Um, Kaimar, for 
people who are watching this, they may not have come to today's or to this year's event. Why should they come to next year's? Ooh, how do I cut down the list to only a few reasons? Um, as with any other, it's like it's you can listen and watch to these sessions afterwards. You can you can watch them online, but the the atmosphere that is created here, it's an atmosphere of sharing and and caring as well. It's professions coming together and, and trying to make the change happen, and it's not driven by by um, by vendors trying to push their methodologies or or tools or what what it might be. It's it's about normal people having challenges and having solutions coming together and trying to solve them and that that's why you should be here excellent it's the best one i've heard today thank you cool Tamar karu of axelos thank you for joining us thank you for thank participating you. in uh, devops enterprise summit 2015 and enjoy the rest of the show thanks until next year then absolutely <laughs> this is alan schimmel of devops.com